Okay, for our last stop on our tour, uh, we're going to go to Greece. And uh, Nico, come on up, uh, take the stage, and, and tell us about Greece. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm very pleased to be speaking about Greece over here. And all this started as a joke between Burak and me because he asked me to uh, present my very, very comprehensive view of the Turkish market. And I was like, I know a thing or two about the Turkish market, but I know a lot more things about the Greek uh, server market. And uh, he was like, okay, you can do it. Um, so here I am then. So I'm gonna take you, you know, to a journey almost you know, like five years uh, ago compared you know, to where you are today here in uh, Turkey. So the Greek startup ecosystem is just getting started. So we're like you know, a couple of years in. So who am I? I was born and raised in Greece, uh, studied engineering in all these different places, uh, worked as a computer engineer uh, for a big company in Japan, launched a social network with one of uh, LinkedIn's co-founders, but we failed miserably. And now I'm investing in early stage companies in the Bay Area with uh, General Catalyst Partners. In the meantime, I co-founded Silicon Valley Greeks and Greek Americans, which is uh, the largest networking group of uh, folks with Hellenic heritage who are interested in technology. So traditionally um, in Greece, um, entrepreneurship has been about selling coffee, frappe as we call it, Greek salads, as well as try you know, to please all the Northern Europeans um, in the summer and make money from hotel rooms as well as you know, the beautiful beaches we have. But in recent years, something big happened in Greece, and this was the financial crisis. So this changed dramatically the way that all the younger people in particular um, viewed their careers. So we had no jobs. Uh, in 2009, 2011, this is a Greek prime minister of the time, you know. Unfortunately, uh, he managed you know, to make that happen. And in the last three years, you know, we went from the traditional, you know, offline brick and mortar, selling pita years of Lucky online. So we went, you know, on the web. So this is a Suvlaki place that is uh, suvlaki.gr, and they're delivering, you know, online. And even mobile. So we have mobile applications for uh, buying Suvlaki and Greek food. Obviously, you know, this is a dream for every single founder that is getting started today in Greece. And it's very similar to Bulgaria. We have a tiny market, so it doesn't make sense to go after serving the market uh, exclusively. So everybody's dreaming big. But what's happening, you know, right now? Why is it happening? So there are no jobs. The expectation of getting a job, mostly with the public sector, is gone. Uh, and as Plato said, you know, once upon a time, necessity is the mother of all invention. So this has actually come uh, to be the case today. Um, it's the best time ever to be an entrepreneur today. It took companies like American Express, HSBC, Unilever, Procter & Gamble, 100 years to build supply chains and more importantly, distributions to have access to a couple of billion people. Now, if you have access you know, to the broadband internet, you can essentially design and launch a mobile application and with a click of a button, reach um, such a huge audience. More importantly, um, the information and the talent flows today are much, much more uh, permeable and widespread as they were in the past. So a lot of the Greek folks were studying at universities or have been working you know, for boring companies, they've learned about startups and they found out that startups are really, really cool. So they've been reading TechCrunch, Hacker News, and kind of demystified the process of new venture creation. So here are some numbers because I've noticed that this audience you know, has a thing you know, for numbers. Uh, we're way smaller than uh, the Turkey startup ecosystem. We have about 150 teams. Uh, that are on the ground. The failure rate is super high. 30 of them roughly, you know, got incorporated. Uh, we have a lot of co-working spaces. So traditionally, Greeks have had a knack for real estate. So that's the way, you know, of them profiting from uh, this situation. Four funds were formed in the recent years, um, and 10 companies have raised funding. 
most of it is seed and small Series A funding. But we have a lot of hype. So startups and new venture creation and all these younger folks who are launching companies have been very, very well received and welcomed by the press. And here you can see the founders of a few companies that actually haven't even launched their products and made it to uh, the BBC or national publications. And you know, because we're Greeks and we love uh, unions, we even have a startup labor union, which is you know super super impressive. Uh, so I can't wait, you know, to see the Greek startups one day go on strike. You know, I've been in Silicon Valley for so many years, I haven't seen the Silicon Valley Startup you know, Association. Uh, so here, you know, some more numbers. As you can see, most of the founders of Greek startups are young people, and they're first-time entrepreneurs. Um, unfortunately. Pretty much, you know, all of them, they want to relocate uh, to the U.S. So this is, you know, great for those of us who live in the U.S., not that great, you know, for the local ecosystem. So let's talk about um, some of the missing pieces of the equation. So we have tons of talented engineers uh, who can speak fluently a bunch of programming languages, although a little bit dated, because in the Greek universities, you know, they don't teach Scala, uh, Objective-C and all, you know, Ruby, the useful, you know, technologies that some of the web and mobile products are built on. Product sense is not really there as well as business acumen. So a lot of these people are trying to build products for themselves and they believe that every single aspect of their daily life can be productized. It's not unfortunately, you know, the case. Um, selling is a big issue. I don't know if it's a cultural one or not, but you know, in the startup world, it's a lot about selling. Selling yourself, fundraising, <laughs> recruiting. We don't have that, you know, um, yet. Um, and sometimes we tend to network mostly with other Greeks. So, unfortunately, we have a big diaspora. But uh, in order to add more skills into um, the equation, you know, Americans are phenomenal marketeers. Uh, British people are really good, you know, in finance. So, you know, we have to network more with them. Good news is that all the talent is pretty cheap. So, a bunch of companies can afford to build pretty, you know, solid engineering teams uh, for small dollars, euros. Uh, so, the startups, uh, we have a bunch of clones, but unlike Turkey, they cannot get to big scale really, really fast. A lot of the people are building de developers tools because this is, you know, what uh, would make their life easier. But unfortunately, it's really, really hard to build a business uh, based on developer tools. Um, good news is that few of the companies are based out of Greece. And traditionally, uh, it's been an investor's market. So it's been pretty, pretty uh, easy to get into pretty much, you know, any company that an investor wanted at a very, very low valuation. Um, we haven't seen any of the Greek startups of the current generation receive funding from a top-tier US-based VC. And uh, if the market continues to be hot at, at the exit you know, side of things, some of them, you know, I can see them you know, getting acquired for 2 to 20 million. Could be a good return for some of the uh, investors who got into you know, um, these companies at a very low valuation, but nothing really, really you know, meaningful for a major European or American-based VC. Good news is that politicians haven't touched that. So traditionally, you know, in Greece, you know, whatever these guys have touched, it didn't work out very nicely, but they haven't had a big interest in startups yet. But as sure as, you know, we grow the ecosystem and have more people in it, I'm sure, you know, that they, were, they will get their hands into it. So investors uh, have been high net worth individuals, so all the shipping magnates, the real estate tycoons, all these folks who, now, you know, uh, have viewed startups as a new asset class. Um, bad news is that um, they don't write checks very fast, and they do a lot of due diligence, they're not super tax savvy. But at least, you know, instead of buying a big, you know, mansion, now they're keen on uh, writing checks to a few, you know, smaller startups and creating a few jobs. Um, now, uh, it continues to be an investor market, but, uh, with the new, you know, four, you know, funds that got created, it's going to change pretty soon. So here, a few success stories. So, uh, to my left, um, you're going to see a Taxibit, which is um, a mobile application where you can hail a cab. This is a Greek company that got started out of Athens. It's dominant in the local market, 
They've uh, launched in Paris, in Brazil, in Norway. So they're, you know, uh, doing pretty well for Greek standards. Uh, a couple of other companies worth mentioning, Baxens, it's a dev tools company. They have built a huge ecosystem of uh, mobile developers, helping them with crash reports. Uh, Transifex is another company that is in the localization space, so helping websites and mobile applications to get localized in a bunch of different languages. So they have clients like Pinterest, Eventbrite, and lots of you know big VCs. Four teams from Greece have um, attended YC, and one of them actually got acquired by Twitter. Uh, here are some success stories of the Greek diaspora. Uh, so Odesk is the, the largest uh, crowdsourcing platform. You can recruit you know, any talent that you want from there. It's a company that will go public next year. As for data, uh, is a company that Teradata acquired for $360 million. $260 million and the co-founders and a lot of the management team members are from Greece. Um, and Velti and Upstream are in the mobile marketing and monetization spaces. So the diaspora is pretty strong and uh, doing pretty well in you know, the US and Europe. Um, like Bulgaria and Turkey, we've uh, organized a bunch of events. So Open Coffee is a leading organization that has been in the business of organizing events pretty, you know, at the weekly, you know, or monthly uh, basis around startups. Collab is a network of five um, co-working spaces. We recently um, helped organize a TechCrunch Athens meetup. Uh, so when I was back in Athens in January, Alexia and I, uh, hosted that and we had over 500 people attending, pretty much you know, the entire uh, Greek startup ecosystem. So VC in Greece uh, has not you know, uh, traditionally been a big industry. Uh, in the past, we've had a few attempts of funds that got raised, but they didn't even you know, manage to find the deal flow to get to invest all the dollars that they raised. So eventually, you know, they had no returns and this was, you know, pretty sad. But thanks, you know, to the European Investment Bank, as it's the case, you know, in Hungary, Bulgaria, and a bunch of other countries, uh, four funds, you know, got formed. And now we have 50 million euros that is available to teams that have some operations in Greece. Uh, and all this capital has to be invested in the next three years. So this is, you know, a lot of capital for a market that is just getting started. Um, so. Some of the challenges that we face, there is not that much of awareness about the Greek uh, startup ecosystem. And this is something that a lot of us, especially you know, who live overseas, have been working on. Um, there is a lack of early um, adopters, founding teams, talent material, and uh, role models. And these are you know, critical elements of a startup ecosystem if you want to build something big and always you know, be shooting for the moon. And despite the fact that the community is pretty uh, small, only 500 people, they still do not know each other. So we're in the very early phases of connecting everybody to each other so that you know, they can help uh, each other and get to move faster. So you know, it would be great you know, now that I'm um, here in Turkey, and given that the Greeks have a lot to learn since we're like you know, four or five years you know, behind you, if we could you know, join forces, and even have something, you know, like a startup, you know, Turkey and Greece, you know, next year, uh, and post this, you know, annually, because there is a lot, you know, to be learned, you know, um, from both sides of the table. Cool. So that's it, you know, about Greece. Thanks, Nico.